I do today. That's generally how my day usually goes. I get my text message in the morning whether I need to come to the shop or head to my first call and where it's at. Well, my call slip number and then I start my day. So I'm heading to the shop now. I'm going to pick up my call and any parts that I may have to get and then uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Basically I've got a slushy machine that is working fine when they're really using it. Too cold otherwise, which means they're probably drawing it down and adjusting it when they need it when they're drawing it down. But then when it's setting there, it's basically it's uh, getting too thick at first. So I've been running some of it through here. This right here is a first tractometer. Checks my bricks level of the uh, solution. There's a certain amount of sugar level in there, and that's done in a thing called bricks, B-R-I-X. And the higher the bricks level, the harder it is to freeze. The lower the uh, bricks level, the more water it is, the easier it freezes. If that's not set correctly, it could be inconsistent. So I checked it, stirred it up. It's fine. We're right in our range that we need to be in. And so now we're doing some adjustments here on the spring. This machine's pretty much brand new. This complaint is it works fine when they're busy, but not so much when they're not. So basically kind of trying to tune it in here. And it's very selective of when it's going to come on. Right now I'm running it in clean mode to thaw it back out because basically it froze down too quickly. So this can be a really slow thing. So as it gets thicker, the ice causes this switch to push over and makes that one close. But there's one of my calls for the other day. This is liquid cool. This is one of those water cool condensers that you've seen on one of my other videos. And uh, here's some of my other machines I work on. We got the U431 and I believe this one here, O231. And then you got the old fashioned tailors here. It's a 754. So basically that one there, I finally got the books on it, so it's not too bad. But this is what I mainly went to school for. So we're gonna basically get this adjusted. And then uh, after that's done, I've got some hinges here to replace. So once they get past this initial draw, things are fine after that. What sucks is, is I've got that adjusted as loose as I can get it. All right, so as you've seen on that, nothing real super exciting to show. I mean, it's just a matter of digging hinges out and adjusting springs until it gives you the right consistency that you're looking for. But unfortunately, it's not just cut and dry, crank it in, crank it out, especially when you've got to check your bricks levels and the machine overdoes it. So now it's frozen. You got to try to thaw that ice slushy stuff out so they can start over again and just keep getting it uh, back and forth until it finally hits where it needs to go. So, going to another one, that's the one uh, where we need to insulate the, the line set on the walk-in freezer. So we've got that one to do, and then uh, we're replacing that motor bracket also. This is the one where we were low on refrigerant, which looks like we're still solid. Fan cycling like it should. And uh, basically, we're gonna get some of this insulation replaced. We're gonna go ahead and put it into a defrost while we get ready to do these sort of things. And I am no insulator. My brother is. He's a union insulator. Knows all the tricks. Because there definitely is some tricks to this stuff. The biggest trick I've learned is not to use too much glue. Would not surprise me that most of that rain down there all that ice is probably because this thing's slushing up. I've got some caulking, butyl caulk, but the problem is it's wet. So it probably ain't gonna stick for crap. I've got some three quarter inch thick Armaflex. Um, gotta split it. I don't like that peel apart garbage. Here we 
razor knife by itself didn't work. I'm sure they, uh, one of those ones where you can extend it would work best, but I don't have to do this very often. This really ain't the right stuff for outside. Generally, you would use that plastic coated stuff. We've got insulators that do that, but I don't think we got any of it at the shop. Usually we order it and just deliver it to the jobs. We'll probably go ahead and just get it done. And three, two, one. Went ahead and just glued it together and slide it through. <laughs> one thing I can say that, you know, it does make sense that he told me, you just want a light coating and you should be able to get tacky like that. So generally one of the things he said that looks like half ass is when you do this at a 45 like I'm doing but I don't have the experience that they've got to be able to do it. You'll actually do three of them. So this piece, that piece, and one in the middle. Think about it, that's not, uh, I don't think it's gonna be appreciated here anyway. I mean, I'm usually one for doing stuff no matter what, do the best your ability. So to be honest with you, with that little razor knife I've got, I'm kind of basically just doing the best I can. Cause I'm, like I said, I'm no insulator and I honestly have only done it a couple times. Then like I said, I'm gonna try to caulk this in and build a bridge so that the rainwater will fall out around the sides. So I'm glued it down the center and then rotating it to there. I have seen guys paint this. Supposedly that helps protect this. So it looks a lot better than it did by far. Nothing super exciting today, guys. I just thought, you know what? Today is a ride-along day. I really haven't had much of anything to record, so unfortunately, I figured we'll just do a ride-along. Not done one of those and figured why not. Went ahead and just glued it together and slide it through. All right, so we got us the new bracket in here. Got some big old fender washers here on this side here. These two are wallered out. So I got that big one on the back side plus the smaller one that I brought. And this one was okay, so I went ahead and just double those up on front and back as extra precautionary. And she's nice and tight. Just need to finish up the ice, which is back there. That's kind of a dingleberry to try to get to. I may have to melt that out with my uh, pump sprayer. I think what's been going on is up above the ceiling here, it's just been dripping down, and I'm pretty sure there's no insulation left on that. And this just is just the moisture and stuff from that, I believe is what's caused it to freeze up like it's done. My focus is gonna be on this part here. I'll see if I can get this, but I've got a lot of other things I gotta get done today. And you know me, I always wanna cut corners, but I just can't do it. So we got it all melted out of there. So basically we got everything melted out. Just use my little pump sprayer here. I've got it all on here. And I'm uh, using wire ties. I couldn't get it to glue or tape. There's just no room in there. Got it all finished up. Got her all sealed with the uh, rubberized caulk. I uh, basically just made me a big old cap around it. And I went ahead and did my top corners there just to be safe that it doesn't come apart. Got the uh, cooler insulated and uh, added some of that around that one too. And over to one more yet. So this is the ice cream machine. It's got a sensor failure. I went in there and took a quick look at it. The sensor basically needs changed. I keep a couple parts here for my ice cream machines. Just the ones that always seem to fail. I'll tell you now, you know, most of these businesses I'm working at are all local and they're not chains and I protect their privacy. So, you know, I will try to never disclose who they are. Four, four. Went ahead and logged into the service menu and basically the temperature it thinks the cylinder's at is 155. But in all reality, it's not. With these machines, everything's ran by consistency and not temperature. So it doesn't really care what the cylinder temperature is until it gets nighttime and it goes to sleep mode. Once in sleep mode, then it pays attention to the temperature of the barrel. So right now it's not a problem. Went ahead and checked my product and it's right around 17, 17 and a half degrees, usually 18, 18 and a half is where I shoot for. But it's working fine during the day. But as soon as nighttime would roll around, it's potentially going to uh, run non-stop and potentially freeze up. So right here's our cylinder, our sensors. And uh, they come down here and these ones actually tie on where the sensing bulb is at. So just gonna get that thing changed out of there. Uh, we've had our share. I mean, I've come in and had ice cream floods, Andrew. Are you going to get your pizza? Are you going to get your pizza? Sure.
We got a common wire here. We all share a common. Go. We've lost quite a few of these, so I, okay, this one's right. <clears throat> I'm not going to waste a lot of time testing resistances and all that. It's, uh, it's a known fact that this has a tendency to fail. These are better than what the original ones were. Okay, there's that. Gets me into service min level. Scroll over to performance. Boom. Left cylinder 52. Right cylinder 72. So now we're in the right vicinity, which 72 is what we are in here. Attach that thing and we should be golden. So, as you can see right there, we've got the yellow cylinder right beside the bulb. And then the insulation wraps back around it. And then we'll get the wire ties and stuff back onto it. It'll be good to go. Get that wire tied up. While we're here, we'll take a quick look at uh, contactors and motor protectors. Belts still seem to be fairly okay. There is our temperature between the left and right. We're good to go there. We'll go into errors, see what kind of errors we had. So, do a little swirl. Run a little cold. We're at 17.3, 17.1. Go into the chocolate world. It's even warmer yet at 16.7. But they changed the mix and things got a little stupid. Something you guys always ask is did I taste it? Well, of course I did. Something you guys don't know is I used to be about 255, 260 pounds. And I lost most of that here in the last year and a half, two years. Called and so it's still struggling to keep it off. So I'm gonna try not to eat too much of that crap. Plus, if you ever see how it hardens inside the machine, you'll be like, uh, how's that working your body? Now, I've only done ice cream now for about, I don't know, four years, three years, four years. Just like everything, I pretty well have learned everything while being at this company. Uh, definitely do more refrigeration here than I ever did prior to. So, there you be. There's a little trick I use for holding my filter in. I have clean filters in there. And like I was saying, they're going to go to gravity machines, which I think will be a lot better for them because they require a lot less maintenance and there's a lot less things that can be wrong to create themselves problems. Belts there are good. Everything looks fairly decent, even though it's a little bit messy. This stuff here is hard, it's not wet. So, anyhow, that's going to wrap up my day today. <laughs>